All right, hey guys, what's up? It's Bibzuda here, and we're going to be continuing the Hardcore S Plus walkthrough for Resident Evil 4 Remake. We are on Chapter 3 here, and this chapter is a decently long one. As you can see, we're starting at 2248 on our timer. Um, this one's decently long because of the Del Lago boss fight at the end, which is a bit of an auto-scroller. Not a whole lot you can do to speed it up, um, and so it ends up being a decently long chapter. But just head out the front here. Um, highly recommend you come save the dog or the wolf or whatever. For some reason, I take my time skipping this cutscene. I kind of forgot it was a cutscene for a second. But um, yeah, it's definitely worth saving the dog because it helps you quite a bit in the Elegante fight after uh, Del Lago. So I would definitely recommend doing that. And then we are going to uh, unlock the gate, of course, and head back towards the village. And in the village, there are the uh, really honestly creepy, I do grab this box here, um, but the really creepy mutated dogs that attack you, but um, I pretty much just ignore them. There's no real need to kill them and they won't catch you if you just go straight for the, um, the hole in the ground that's now open. So yeah, just open up the gate and run down to the center where you have to be this blocked off. I actually run in here and grab this crate because I didn't grab it during the village fight. Sometimes I get that one if I end up having bad routing, but um, yeah, if it's still there, you can grab it. But then boom, there goes the tower. Watch out for the bear trap here. You can try and walk around it or just knife it. And there is a red herb in that cart if you didn't grab it during the village section either. But yeah, just jump straight down the well and there will be no issue with the dogs. So yeah, you don't have to kill them. Um, there's four barrels pretty close proximity down here. I recommend looting those whatever you get. Always good pretty much. Um, I get some small materials here, so I just quickly craft those into shotgun shells. Um, for the most part, I craft rifle ammo with my gunpowder, um, but uh, right now I, I don't have, I don't think I had any large materials, or if, if I, even if I did. Crafting shotgun shells is pretty good as well. I don't normally craft handgun bullets, although maybe I will in this run because I will have the red nine, which will be very strong once it's fully upgraded. Um, in there is a viper. You can knife it twice to grab it and um, probably want to do that because if you sell three of those, you get a um, another cup, a bunch of spinels. Uh, right here, there is a treasure on the ceiling that you want to shoot down. Grab loot from that cabinet. And there's also a first aid spray, which I want to grab. So I go ahead and craft myself some handgun ammo. Like I said, I don't normally do it, but in this case for inventory space and everything, uh, definitely worth it. So I can grab this first aid spray. And then there's some shotgun shells in this drawer, which I don't know exactly what to get rid of, but I just end up discarding one of these kitchen knives. Those are probably the least valuable item in the inventory. We have another merchant encounter here, and I am going to sell off some stuff to try and get that inventory space. Obviously sell off the, the sellable only treasures. Um, I get rid of the viper, and then I end up selling one of the kitchen knives off just to get some space, um, and that's pretty much it. Nothing special really, and I kind of just improvise my merchant stuff every time. Repair the knife, of course, and then I do one level of power on my pistol, which I probably shouldn't have done, um, but I also do one level of durability on the knife. Um, I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do during this, so I would probably avoid the pistol uh, power there because we are going to be getting the red nine in chapter four. Um, but yeah, I upgraded it here just for this chapter, I guess, but um, probably not something you want to do since we will be running past most enemies in this chapter. You can shoot down that bird's nest to get something. I think uh, it's a random loot, but I got rifle ammo there. Uh, walk up behind this guy in the graveyard and just stab him in the neck and then you want to break the two gravestones to your left here for the um, uh, Merchant request because that will be a nice free bit of spinels really easy one there And that I think is always a chicken egg you can shoot down that nest for that chicken the white chicken egg Which um, is the worst one, but still a small bit of healing it only takes up one square in your inventory Get a cutscene after you open the gate and a calm after the cutscene, so skip those and then come down here to the left of the door and grab this red gemstone ring. Uh, some of the treasures I grabbed may be from the treasure map DLC, which I just got because I bought the deluxe version of the game. Um, so if, if you don't have those, uh, you don't need them by any means, so it wouldn't be too big of a deal. But um, if, if there's a treasure that's not there for you, then that's probably why, and you know my apologies for that. But um, I, I think this game is fantastic and I'd want to support it any way I can. So uh, that's why I have the deluxe version. Nothing special there. I just went through the church little side room and went down the, uh, you know, went down the, the way to get to the 
uh, path here, and there's a viper in that box as well, so double slash it to get it open, and while you're doing that, some guys will be building up outside of the door, and you can utilize that explosive barrel to destroy them. Thankfully right here, that guy with the Molotov threw it, and that required, uh, caused the others to all duck. If they don't, try and just parry one of their attacks and, and get a kick on one of them to get by. And um, then if there's someone at the ladder, you can also shoot them. These two guys run out. Again, I just use parrying to get by. You can use the shotgun there if you want, but um, you know it's up to you really if you're confident in your parries or not. And then we uh, make sure to disable that tripwire and keep running through. So pretty quick run through that area. Uh, again, if the people don't end up ducking for whatever reason to you know, not let you get through the, the top area as easily, then I would recommend you definitely go ahead and uh, shotgun them to get by. Or if you, if you really are confident, like I said, you can do the parries. These two dogs here, I like to go ahead and kill because they are fast and can catch you pretty easily if you try to run by. And I, you know, I don't know, I, I'm not a big fan of those dogs. They are super creepy and super annoying, especially in the hedge maze later on in the castle. Uh, gonna be really annoying when we get there. But just continuing on, there's some small resources over there. I picked those up and just craft against more shotgun shells just to get some more inventory space again because shotgun shells use, I think it's 12 gunpowder. So that's a guaranteed one slot from the 10 gunpowder. And then of course, two slots from the small, if you already have shotgun ammo. Uh, yet another merchant here. I just sell the treasures that I've gotten up to here, including the Viper. So now we have two of those. And uh, I don't know what exactly, I, I definitely repair the knife, yep. And I'm looking, considering, and I'm not sure. I don't think I actually buy anything. Or do I waste some? I, I waste some more money on my pistol here. So, yeah, you could have some bonus money for yourself here if you don't waste it on this pistol like I do. Uh, I don't think it's worth it for sure. But um, either way, it's uh, you know probably a good thing. I guess some of those extra treasures that maybe I got from that treasure map are not uh, even going to be utilized since I'm. Ending up selling this pistol later. Although you do get additional money back for using the tune-ups, you still lose some in the exchange. So definitely wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, you can grab some gunpowder here. You can also leave that for when you're on the way back, but it um, doesn't really matter that much. And now we are here in the little swamp area, or I think it's called the fish farm, right? And this is where we need to get the fuel. Uh, make sure you take the down low path here through the water, because there's a, one of those big scary cow men on the upper path. And these people won't be looking at you, so you can usually just run straight past them, but be ready to parry if one of them does a quick turn on you. Um, and I have my shotgun out whenever I'm running through groups in case I need to shotgun someone, which is always possible. Um, shoot that little uh, tripwire there to get by, and there'll be this guy with the torch. Or is that a Molotov? I think it was a torch on the right. Uh, he can just run right by usually. I don't know how he got behind me there, honestly. Um, but yep, slash the lock off the door and grab the fuel and the chicken egg use that chicken egg right away, just heal off that random hit that I got. Um, then someone threw a hatchet at me there. Uh, quite a few people can build up in this doorway, but sometimes you can actually just run straight out. I kind of got unlucky here with all the people that were there. That's usually not how it goes down. Um, but if that does happen, don't, feel, don't be afraid to heal. Don't be afraid to pull out your shotgun, blast someone to get through, and then climb the ladder as quickly as you can. Uh, and you know, always be trying to parry when you can. And um, yeah, in, in situations like that, it's definitely a little bit awkward uh, because you I'm trying to squeeze through the doorway without uh, you know getting hit or anything but uh, if you have the shotgun and if you're parrying you should be okay you can shoot that tripwire behind the archer up there as well of course and then right here I do have to do some blocking to get through now with the hatchet was thankfully lenient with me I try to like matrix block this lady's uh, crossbow bolt but I'm not quick enough so I take that hit unfortunately and I think another so I did this section honestly pretty sloppily. Um, I do pretty much recommend that same route that I ran essentially. There's not much you can change in that regard, but uh, just handling the enemies a little better will definitely suit you well. I would probably shotgun the lady with the crossbow um, on a rerun if I were to do this again. So yeah, I would recommend sh shooting her so you don't get shot by that. Um, and just being more prepared to parry things that are behind you and, and Maybe being quicker in that house could obviously benefit you if you're able to get through without so many people building up in the doorway and you know, grabbing the fuel a little bit more quickly. And yeah, you can loot that house. It has a decent amount of stuff in it, so probably pretty worth it. And then just fuel up the boat. And we have the Del Lago boss fight. So yeah, not a whole lot to say about this fight, really. It's pretty easy if you have done it before at all. Um, just pretty much throw the harpoons whenever you can and always try to land them. 
If you don't know by now, the longer you hold the harpoon up, the stronger you will throw it up to a certain maximum, but it takes quite a while to reach that maximum. So you definitely want to be aware of that when you're trying to make further throws. Here at the start, it doesn't matter too much because it's very easy to hit him. Um, you can also get some hits in when he jumps up out of the water like that. But um, as it goes on, and also during the parts where he's in charging the boat, you do need to hold down the harpoon for a little bit longer to get the maximum strength to throw it far enough to actually connect. Um, and it also does matter sometimes at close range because you'll throw it harder and therefore it'll move more quickly and hit, get to the target quicker if you do that. Um, so yeah, sometimes during the fight he will do this where he swims around you. I don't really understand how this works. Like, how does he go from towing you to not towing you to then towing you again? Um, you, in this first one where he's always always above the water, you can get some free pot shots on him as he swims around and then just hit him with one or two as he charges the boat to uh, get that uh, da free damage in and stop him from fighting the boat. I think he always does a jump after that first charge, so take advantage of that. And yeah, just avoid the obstacles. I would say this is probably easier than it was in the original since it's much you have to do quite a bit less dodging of the random debris in the water than you did before as far as I can tell so that makes it a bit easier and um, yeah I mean, there's, there's not a whole lot else to, to say about it really. One thing to be aware of is if you are holding a harpoon up like this uh, you know aiming it and then you let go of the button that you hold to aim it Leon will actually just throw it. You won't be able to cancel out the harpoon animation to like put it down and not throw it. Not that big a deal really to know in a regular fight, but there is a challenge uh, for fighting Del Lago, which is called In Tune with the Harpoon, which requires you to not miss a single harpoon while you are fighting him. So that can be important to know if you're going for that. Um, I was able to get that. I did it on standard difficulty. It was uh, pretty easy. It only took me a couple tries, but... You have to be pretty patient with it uh, during that. So I'm trying to find him here as he's doing another charge to the boat. I uh, get a free spear in there. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it, you guys, for this fight. Uh, after a while, you know, after enough harpoons, he will go down. And that'll be the end of the chapter here. So yeah, chapter three, pretty long one, as I said, um, compared to others. I mean, it's, it's, it's similar in length to chapter one. Which is, um, which is of course due to the village segment. This is kind of similar to that village segment in, the, in that there's not a whole lot you can do to speed it up. Uh, a lot of times you'll be not able to throw harpoons at opportune times. Like whenever he jumps, uh, or like there's certain times where you just can't pull up the harpoon for whatever reason. You, you know, like the boat's being shook too much or whatever. The reason would be for that in the game. I don't know, but. Um, that can be a bit annoying since it's usually during those times when he is presenting uh, easy hits for you. Barely avoid getting hit there. Um, just so you know, you can take three full-on hits, or I guess two, and then the third one will kill you. But um, it's usually, I, like, I didn't take any hits there. And sometimes you can get glancing hits, which don't deal a full amount of damage. So that's a bit uh, less worrisome. But yeah, there we go. Chapter three complete in just under 13 minutes. And uh, we'll be back for chapter four in a little bit.